I need to put roller brackets on both these pads in this top level assembly to hold a roller. The bracket which I'll show you here is not symmetrical so as you can see it's going to have to be mirrored in the assembly. I want to have the angle side down. So in this particular model which I save externally I have put a parameter. Now I did this because I use it over and over but you don't have to. You can put it inside the assembly when you place it. But notice I put in a parameter called scale factor and, and set it to 1. That will become important later. I save that out and I'm going to use it. So I'll go to my external files, bring that roller bracket in. I'll then move it over. And I, this is the first one. So I, it is correct. So I'm going to just move this assembly around a little bit and put it on this pad right there using a rigid joint between the center of this and the center of this. As you can see it comes in with the angle side down. That's just perfect. But you can see that the other side is not going to work. I'm going to break that link because I don't want it linked. Very important. Now I'm going to bring another one in. I'm going to move it off to the side so you can see it better and I'm also going to break that link. Now you could go up here and use the mirror command on a component but I'll tell you right now that gives you a adverse looking parts list plus a mirror in your browser. Let's do it a different way. So you remember that parameter. If I go up under my parameters I'll see that I have two of them. One's with the first bracket, one for the second which is under bar one. They're both set to one at this time. Now what I want to do is go to scale. I'm going to scale the last bracket. I want to pick non-uniform from the list and then I want to pick the component. Now it gives you three directions you can scale it. I want it from end to end, so I'm going to pick on the one that's already highlighted. You can just pick on either one you want. And then I'm going to type S to pick up my parameter. I want to be sure and pick up the second bracket, which is under bar 1. I want to then say OK. Nothing happens. But watch this. If I go, let me see if I can move this so you can see it. If I go up on a modify parameters, see if I can move this up so you can see it. I change that second one to a value of minus 1 and say OK. Watch the bracket. It flips. And it also does not add mirror to it in the browser. Now I can simply go ahead and add it to the uh, bracket, uh, pad with no problems at all and get the same orientation. I need to roll it around 180 degrees but that gives me exactly the same orientation. As you can see, both brackets are down. A side note to this, if you happen to have in that external bracket built-in sketches for other features, such as this cable hole, notice it's not in a position to do the extrude after you do this operation. So what you want to do, if you forget to do that cable hole first, just drag your timeline back before the mirror and activate the sketch and extrude it before you mirror it. I'm going to do a, a cut all the way through so I have that hole beforehand as you can see. So now all I do is drag my timeline back and it puts it back in position with that cable hole. So that's, that's just in case you happen to have put features in there that you want to use be, so activate them and make them visible or extrude them before you do the mirror. I hope this helped you do better modeling in Fusion 360.